Hey everyone, Dr. Yi here. Welcome to another TEAS lesson. Today, we're gonna look at how conditions may affect chemical reactions. As you can see in this uh, comparison table, TEAS has some new wording for the learning objectives. Um, it specifically says um, you need to be able to describe the factors that may influence reaction rates. Um, so some of the factors we have covered previously for TC6, and they're really the same. There's uh, no change. And the next one um, I do want to kind of focus on in today's lesson, and this is about apply the Chandelier's principle to explain how chemical equilibrium is achieved. I don't think that was a major thing in T6. So we're going to talk about what this principle is. And when you see a question, uh, certain changes in the conditions, you can predict how this chemical equilibrium is going to change. Is the chemical reaction going to move to the left or to the right? And the last one about enzymes, which are basically chemical catalysts, um, have been discussed a lot. Um, so I will skip going over this part again, but I do have a practice question on the enzymes. All right, now let's move on to chemical equilibrium. Not all reactions are one-way chemical reactions, right? So, so think about this. If you have carbon, you burn it, it reacts with oxygen, and that generates carbon dioxide, right? Or we can be more specific, right? If you have a glucose. So this happens during cellular respiration, right? Our cells burn glucose uh, with oxygen, and this generates carbon dioxide, which is a metabolic waste that we exhale, right? We breathe out to get rid of it. Uh, that process also generates water, right? But most importantly, it, it generates energy that will be used to, to synthesize ATP, right? So you can see um, in these two chemical reactions, it's just a one-way street, right? The chemical reactions are uh, irreversible. After you burn the glucose, you, you can't go back, right? The body cannot, the cells cannot do that. Um, but plant cells can do a different chemical reactions. They can use the inorganic uh, carbon dioxide, water, and energy from the sunlight to synthesize glucose. And that process generates a byproduct, uh, which is oxygen. But that will be two different chemical reactions, right? And each one of them is non-reversible. You can only go one way. But many reactions are reversible, meaning the reactions can go both directions. It can move forward from left to right or the other way, right? From right to left. Normally, when we talk about left, that's where you see the reactants, right? Things that go into a chemical reaction. And then on the right, that's the product. That's what the chemical reaction makes in the end. Okay, now what is equilibrium? That is a condition where no net change in the amount of reactants and the product occurs. Um, basically, in, in a reversible chemical reaction, things can move in both directions. So I have example here. Let's say we have um, carbon dioxide reacts with the water, and that can make carbonic acid. Carbonic acid can further break down, and that's also a reversible chemical reaction. But I'm going to skip that part. Um, you probably have noticed that I'm using this kind of two half arrows, right, pointing to opposite directions. And this usually signals that this is a reversible chemical reaction. So because it can go both ways, right, um, when it reaches equilibrium, the chemical reactions are still going on on both directions, but the amount of each chemical remains the same. And that's because the chemical rate is the same, whether you're going from left to right or right to left. So, you know, all the, the changes really cancel out. So there's no net change. Now, again, that just means the amount of all these chemicals remain the same. So that's when you reach an equilibrium. Now, there are um, some factors that can affect equilibrium. For instance, concentrations of reactants and products. Um, how much you have for reactants or products can affect equilibrium, and we'll talk about that in detail. 
Temperature, that's another important factor, especially when the chemical reaction um, either absorbs heat, requires the heat, or it releases heat. So when that happens, the temperature can have a big impact on equilibrium. And the last factor is pressure. And pressure can be a big factor when there are gas chemicals in that reaction. Now, what is uh, Le Chandelier's principle? So this principle states that if the equilibrium is disturbed, the equilibrium will shift to counteract the change, meaning the chemical reaction will kind of adjust itself to try to cancel out the change. That's kind of what it means. I have a tip here. You can think of it as something similar to the negative feedback loop in physiology. Remember that negative feedback uh, basically uh, is the body's response to counteract the changes right, that occur in the external or internal environment. Okay. All right, now, so we're gonna look at how these three factors affect the equilibrium of a particular chemical reaction. And once you see examples, then you will understand better how an equilibrium will shift. Okay, so I have an example here. Nitrogen reacts with hydrogen and that generates ammonia. Uh, for this chemical reaction, it's endothermic, meaning this chemical reaction requires heat. So it needs heat to proceed from left to right. How do you remember the term endothermic? Because there's another term, right? Which is exothermic. Um, they look very similar, but they have opposite meanings. So this is how you remember. Endo means in, right? So that means the heat goes into the chemical reaction into the chemical reaction, which is the same as the chemical reaction requires heat, right? It absorbs heat in order to proceed. Axo means out. So that means heat comes out. And this means that the chemical reaction releases heat. As the chemical reaction goes on, it produces a heat that's released into the environment. So that's exothermic. So endothermic heat goes in to support the chemical reaction, to power the chemical reaction, and exothermic, the chemical reaction generates heat and releases the heat. And that's important because you're gonna look at how temperature affects equilibrium. And more and higher temperature means more heat, lower temperature means less heat. So that's, um, so it's important that you know what endothermic and, and exothermic mean. Okay, so let's look at concentration first. So this refers to the reactant concentration or product concentration. If nitrogen or hydrogen concentration increases, so these are reactants, right? Because they're on the left side. If the reactant concentration increases, the chemical reaction will shift to the right. And that's because you're increasing how much on the left side, right? It goes up. And as we mentioned earlier, the equilibrium will shift to counteract the change. So it wants to do the opposite, to balance that change, to cancel out that change. So if the reactant side goes up, right, more reactants, then the chemical reaction will move to the right to use up, to use up the reactants to make more products. Okay, so again, you increase the reactant concentrations, you're providing more reactants, right? So the chemical reaction wants to do the opposite. It wants to reduce how much the reactants are. And the only way to do it is to put them all in the chemical reaction, right? And move the chemical reaction to the right. So you are using the reactants. So that balances out the increase in reactant concentrations. 
Now, what if I increase the product concentration? If ammonia concentration increases, so now you have increased amount of chemical on the right. So the equilibrium wants to use up the ammonium, right? It wants to reduce as a counter movement. So the chemical reaction should go to the left, right? So you have ammonium going into the chemical reaction and break down, right, into nitrogen and hydrogen. Okay, so this is how it works when you change the concentrations of different chemicals in the reaction. Now, how about temperature? If the temperature increases, that means there is more heat present. Now, with that, the chemical reaction wants to use the heat, right? So it's going to shift to the right because the chemical reaction requires heat. So if it goes to the right, then it will use the heat to counter the temperature increase. So this is how it works. Now, if you decrease the temperature, then the chemical reaction wants to generate heat. So how would you do to generate more heat? You go to the other direction, right? So you go from right to left, because when you go the opposite direction, you produce heat. OK, last one, pressure. So this only applies to reactions with the gas chemicals, like I said earlier. Um, but it doesn't have too much impact on solid and a liquid. So most of the questions about chemical equilibrium will probably focus on solid and a liquid. So if you have a limited amount of time, I would say focus on concentration and temperature, how those uh, factors can affect chemical equilibrium.